Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Washington Kurdish Institute's podcast. Um, today, we have a special guest, the founder and director of the New York Kurdish Film and Kurd uh, Cultural Festival, Heyal Kertel. She's an extraordinary activist and educator who founded the festival in 2017 to raise awareness on the Kurds, giving a voice to the 40 million Kurds around the world by promoting their culture. This year, the event will take place starting the 10th of September until the 12th at, East, at Village East by Angelica in New York City. Three days where you can all have a full immersion in the beauties of Kurdish culture and specifically on Kurdish women. In fact, this fifth edition focuses on women and their contribution to the human rights discourse, feminism, literature, and egalitarian social organizing. Together with Heyal, we're going to talk about this event starting from the beginning. So first of all, thank you for being here. I imagine these last days of preparation could be a little hectic, so I really appreciate you being here today. Um, the first question I want to ask is how come a Kurdish festival and what inspired you to, I mean, develop this idea <laughs> and concept? Oh, thank you for Washington Kurdish Institute and Julia for hosting us. Um, this is a great opportunity to meet uh, you and uh, your audience. So in 2017, I was involved in various organizations and uh, grassroots grassroots uh, initiatives to raise awareness about Kurds. And back then we, Kurds, Kurdish women and our YPJ, YPG fighters were on headlines. Their heroic fight against um, ISIS, uh, Daesh um, terrorist in Syria and Iraq. Um, but we knew, my friends and I knew that this will not last long. Once the fight is over, once the Kurds win, um, everyone will forget Kurds again, right? So, and also what really um, disturbed Wing was Kurds being depicted as heroic fighters, fierce fighters, and you know, fears, uh, fears, and they can they can die for their country, they are good fighters, as if Kurds do not have their own language, um, they don't have their own culture, music, nothing. There was, there was nothing in America uh, promoting, almost there is nothing in America promoting us as one of the largest ethnic group in the world without a nation, but not without cultural heritage. Kurds being a native in Mesopotamia and the surrounding neighbor, uh, neighbors in the Middle East has a um, rich history and contributed to um, arts, music, food, um, tradition, um, and, and, and other ways to um, humanitarian values and so on and so forth, yet no one is talking about it. So I decided um, that um, this is not, this is not should be the way to go. Um, therefore, I wanted to get away from that, you know, militaristic um, introduction and the saving of Kurds as an image and really introducing our rich culture um, to American and wider audience. Well, that's great. I mean, I, I think it's always important to, I mean, export your own culture abroad and I mean, have everybody know how important your culture is for yourself and for your entire community. So this is, this, I mean, puts me up to my second question. So your, the goal of your festival is to give a voice to, as you said, all the millions of Kurds around the world and have the pop, I mean, world understand the strong cultural heritage you have. So what does this mean for the Kurdish community in the US? How, how strong is this for them? Mm -hmm. Well, first we have to acknowledge that Kurdish culture is being, um, highly uh, oppressed and suppressed and the assimilation by, 
by the countries that um, colonizing Kurdish uh, native lands are very strong. So we are really fighting to keep our heritage, keep our culture intact for a very long time against all the odds. Therefore, uh, that long internalized assimilation um, moves or immigrates with us when we move to America or somewhere else. And in New York particularly, um, there is no Kurdish cultural center. There is no, um, even though New York is a melting pot of all the cultures that, uh, and, and being proud of it, unfortunately, you know, New York state officials um, yet to support us to um, manifest that culture, right? Um, therefore, this festival aims to create safe space for Kurds to first enjoy their heritage, right? Acknowledge their heritage that they never had opportunity in their homeland. And that share that proud heritage with um, our American sisters and brothers here. Well, I myself am not a Kurd, but um, I'm a, I say I'm a really, I'm really proud of, uh, of your culture. I've been studying it for a lot of years. I also watched your festival last year and uh, I might say many things are really amazing that every time you, you learn, every time you read something, you talk with somebody, <laughs> I mean, it's all amazing. Um, so this year is your fifth, fifth edition. Um, as I said, you, I mean, founded the festival in 2017 and this year you decided to focus on Kurdish women. So, uh, I mean, you talked about that a little bit before, but um, how come, I mean, Kurdish women? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think I have to um, refer back to our first um, question um, during 2016-17, Kurdish women being depicted as fierce fighters and beating of uh, these terrorist groups. And, and you know, unfortunately, they be, even their outfit was uh, exploited uh, by various uh, fashion companies uh, that, you know, they dressed, they, they had their models dressed like Kurdish women, right? But nothing further than that. Uh, Kurdish women deserves a lot better. We've been contributing to history, to music, to, um, to, uh, to our values, to art, to, you know, be Kurdish women, um, are very strong and very capable, right? Um, and now they are in Syria introducing a new way of understanding who women are, right? Who are we? Are we just simply opposite sex of male? Is that all? And particularly being in the Middle East, right? Uh, that puts Kurdish women under heavily traditional understanding of Kurd or Kurds and plus Kurdish women, imagine the oppression on Kurdish women and Kurds in general, and then the woman being in the Middle East, which is very patriarchal. Therefore, now Kurdish women's struggle is well about fighting in the field, battlefield, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a long battle that they are undertaking. They are introducing um, dual uh, representation around, you know, across the societal uh, institutions. Um, they are trying to create space for women to get together and talk about what what means to be women. And also, we see um, through our films, for instance, the first night opening film after the talk of Gail um, Leman on um, her book, Daughters of Kobani. And now we see a Vese Altai's film, documentary film, New Jin, New Life, how Kurdish women uh, was fighting, what were their uh, motivation in Kobani. Followed by another film, documentary film by Alba Sotora, um, this documentary touches upon 
what Kurdish woman is being doing, at least one portion of it, after they won the victory against all the odds, right, in Kobani. And we see that how they are um, defending humanitarian values to bring some, some of the ISIS women who are, you know, relatively uh, moderate and relatively speaking, um, regret what they've done, uh, yet no way of, um, no way of uh, capturing or forgetting what they've done, which was, you know, evil and it's, it was just uh, inhumane. But we see women struggle um, and Kurdish struggle in, uh, overall in, in Rojava in Northeast Syria that, for instance, West and America do not want over 100,000 ISIS women and, and kids back to their own country. So Kurds are kind of stuck, not kind of, they are stuck with um, so many um, people. And what, you know, what is it that you can do? What you should be doing as human being? You know, it's a very, very challenging uh, spot to be at. Um, so the, this film also, again, brings, a, um, brings another side of Kurdish women, how strong they are. Uh, on human values, right? What is it that they are trying to do um, in, in Syria and uh, in the Middle East by um, approaching this ISIS woman, trying to understand their motivation um, and you know, trying to gain them back into society. And, and we see that that's very, very challenging. While West, and uh, including America, turn their back, their own citizen. They don't want their own citizen back to their country, not even with the condition um, to bring them into trial, right? They don't want them, period. And we are the Kurds who are stuck with all the odds condition that they have, they are facing in, in uh, Rojava and elsewhere in Kurdistan, trying to um, show um, or create space for these women to not to, you know, go to other extremist women and trying to create um, opportunity for their kids, right? Because kids are learning from their mothers. So this is, um, I mean, mind blowing against the against the Western humanitarian values, right? We see the hypocrisy there. Uh, we see how it is only in, in written format, but when we look at reality, reality is telling us something very, very different. Yeah, well, I don't know about you, but um, I believe there should be a movie only on Voices of Women of Kurdistan to talk about like the bottom up movement uh, where women play a fantastic and most important role in, uh, in Rojava. Um, well, you talked about it a little bit before, um, but mm -hmm. tell me a little bit maybe more about the festival. So you said movies, uh, um, mm -hmm. I heard about a book. Uh, so I guess your cultural events, uh, um, mm -hmm. what's going on? Well, first of all, um, this is our, again, fifth edition, and we also were part of this first global Kurdish initiatives led by K London Kurdish uh, Film Festival. Uh, it was in April, it was online, and we it was a huge collaborative effort, and it was a huge success um, for Kurdish festivals around the globe. Um, to, to work together, to being side by side, to introduce our Kurdish cinema. Uh, so we were, uh, we are proud of to be, you know, one of the partners. Now our, our festival is different than other Kurdish festivals around the globe because ours is not only 
uh, film, but also cultural festival. As again, to, because there is this huge vacuum in, in New York and in America in general to introduce Kurds in within their um, within their culture, within their songs, within their arts, and so on and so forth. Um, and that we not only screen Kurdish films or by non-Kurdish both uh, directors, but about Kurds, uh, but also we have live Kurdish music, we have um, Q&A sessions, uh, we have poetry, uh, we have um, book talking and signing and this year as well. In addition, we are displaying traditional Kurdish outfits throughout the festival. That's nice. Um, so the first book talk is again uh, during opening night after Ozan Akso's um, introduction on Kurdish music, and then he will also perform some um, Kurdish music as well, is uh, Gail Leman, who is one of the New York Times bestseller author. Her book uh, was a huge success, Daughters of Kobani. And she went to Kobani multiple times to interview Kurdish women, right? From their everyday life um, to their, their plan for the future, for themselves, for their families, for Kurds, for uh, society, and in, in general. And, in, and their understanding of feminism and their contribution to it. Um, then we have again two films back to back, uh, one, one during the Kobani by Vesey Altai called Mujin. And uh, the last one is about again, um, Sotora's films about ISIS women and Kurdish women. Um, second day, we are um, starting with a film called Jibo Azadiya, uh, directed by uh, Arsene um, Chilik, um, collaborated effort by uh, Rojava Film Commune. And in that documentary, we see Kurdish youth uh, fighting against their oppressors right, in North uh, Kurdistan, in Ahmed. Um, this will followed by q and by um, filmmaker Chilik, who, who was also a journalist. And then we have another um, book talk by Kurdish author this time, our dear Abahoma. And that is um, a fiction novel that she also had huge success and her book got uh, published by both English and then translated into um, into uh, Kurdish dialect, Sorani, as well. So we have this full program to, we are not claiming that we are giving the full, full texture of what is Kurdish culture is, but at least, you know, a um, little introduction on how Kurdish music sounds like, what are instruments, for instance, um, for instance, uh, Lukman Ahmed will join us on the third day, and he will uh, also play Kanun, which is also, um, uh, historically speaking, a, a Kurdish instrument, yet is being assimilated, right? No one almost knows that that's Kurdish, historically speaking, Kurdish instrument. So each and every event, uh, Julia I assure you, uh, took weeks and weeks for us to, um, to, to really give the sense of Kurdish cinema and, and the content and how to make people at least have a um, small or you know, minor understanding of uh, Kurdish culture. 
Yeah, well, um, I love Kurdish music, uh, as, I, as I told you, so now everybody's going to know. I live in Italy, specifically in Rome, and I went to this concert once in these, uh, I mean, in this am ancient Roman amphitheater, thinking it was only Middle Eastern music. Uh, instead, mm -hmm. uh, for the entire period, there was this Kurdish refugee that was uh, singing the guitar and uh, in a Roman amphitheater, and I, and I found it amazing. So I bet it's going to be amazing yeah. there, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm pretty sure. Thank you, Thank you for sharing your, um, your yeah, well, uh, Kurdish music memory. Is, is great everywhere for my for my personal opinion. Um, I want to ask you one last question. And mm -hmm. this is uh, what message do you personally want to send um, mm -hmm. about this event? Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, uh, we'd like to thank you for um, the support that we are getting from our Kurdish sisters and brothers and also grassroots organizations, American organizations um, that we, we received so far. Uh, but this is not enough, right? We like to expand um, our areas of activities, such as we, we had um, Kurdish govand, Kurdish folklore dance classes, uh, for kids and adults uh, for about two months. We also offered English classes for Kurdish speakers uh, for about also two months. And we are planning to offer Kurdish um, lessons for free, hopefully in person, in, in hybrid mode modalities, both um, in person and uh, online. We need everyone, everyone's help to um, spread the word, right? Because unless we touch your heart, you will not touch someone else's heart. And this is a great opportunity for everyone who's listening this podcast um, to, to help us, to show their solidarity if they want to work with us to you know to have to become a volunteer or to um, to involve in our future projects or to host us in their hometown, we also like to uh, have a tour in America to screen um, some of the films that we screened, you know, music and others within our capacity. So host us in your hometown is if you are far, far away from New York. Um, help us in social media accounts to spread the word, to introduce our own culture, or to give a voice that largest ethnic, ethnic city around the globe, unfortunately not being represented, underrepresented, and if represented at all. Well, I mean, I'm going to follow up in your message, and I'm also going to remind that the festival is from the 10th to 12th of September in uh, Village East uh, of Veronica in New York City. So, um, well, thank you very much. And uh, I mean, what you're doing for this festival and I mean, all your organization, which I wish everybody, I mean, a huge good luck and how you would say in Italian, un grande in bocca al lupo. And um, I mean, thank you for the interview. And I really hope your message, I mean, receives, I mean, gets to everybody who is attending and also, I mean, who doesn't attend. Um, I don't know if you want to express. Ask, Galexpas <laughs> in Kurdish. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to um, to meet you and your audience, and hope to see you in our festival one day, Julia, when you are back in New York. Well, I did follow you online last year, so <laughs> I'll be there. I mean, attending in person someday. Well, good luck yes. then. Looking forward to it.